Pods on a mission now on BBC Two to find out all about plants. Annie is the daughter of a superhero pair. And though they love her very much, the two are hardly there. But Annie has a special power and robots on the go to help her learn the things she needs to know. Yes, she has Arlo, Arlo, and a cheeky red robot pod. So here we are and on we go. Have you had enough to eat? Plenty. Thank you. I don't like to complain, but do you think you could get me a real worm instead of hot? Oh, but I'm having fun stirring your soil. What? Stirring the soil? Stirring the soil keeps it healthy. A healthy soil equals a healthy plant. That's why worms are important. Worms are quiet. You're too noisy, Pod. Please, go. No, I'm staying. No, you're not. Rewind! I can poke holes in your soil. That would keep it fresh. Thank you, Annie. No, may I have a spot of sunshine? Of course. Can you tell me exactly how a plant grows? Your wish is my command. Pod? OK. Off on a mission! So many different kinds of plants. And they all began the same way. As seeds. which grow roots. Why are the roots wriggling around like that? They're looking for food and water. Now the stems are growing. And the leaves. Ain't nature wonderful? Here's another moving plant. No, it's not. It's Dawn. She knows lots about plants. What's up with that plant? Well, this laurel plant isn't very happy, and I'm going to take a look inside, because I think that its roots don't have enough space to grow in. Let's have a look, Dawn. You can see, looking at this, the roots are so pot-bound that they actually haven't got much space at all, and they're all knotted up in the bottom. And I can just pull a few out to show you exactly how long they've got. Why do plants have roots? They need to anchor the plant in the soil and they also have to seek water to bring it up to the stem. And why do plants need stems? Well, stems are really important. They have two jobs. They're like our skeleton, really. They hold everything together. They support the leaves. And the other job that they do, a bit like straws when you're at a party sucking up lots of fizzy drink, they bring up water from the soil. And that's a really important job. What's wrong with that little plant over there? Oh, well, this I've borrowed an experiment from the local primary school. And what they did is they took all the leaves off this one and they kept the leaves on this one. And they looked at the changes over four weeks. And as you can see, the one without leaves is very unhappy. So, plants can't do without leaves then? Well, leaves are the food factory of the plant. They're unique. They're the only living thing on Earth that can create their own food. And they do this by using sunlight. And we have a special name for that. It's called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. All leaves do that, but sometimes they do other things too. Here's a cactus pod. Over a very long time, cactus leaves have shrunk and shrunk and shrunk till they're so small, they're like a needle. This needle also does another job. It scares off animals. I thought you'd like to see some of these tropical plants because their leaves are great for instant umbrellas when you're caught in a rainstorm. This is a very unusual leaf and it's specially designed to trap flies in a lake of death. I'm cutting down 
through the leaf and hopefully you'll find some dead flies and moths. Ooh, yuck! But I don't like moths, Annie. When you put me in the garden on my own, how will I eat? How will I drink? Don't worry, plant. Remember, there's a good reason you have leaves, roots and a stem. There is. Wait till you see what's next. Something good. Oh, please, let's look. I want my plant to be happy. Thank you, Annie. Over to you, Pod. Pod? Pod! Where are you? Here I am and on my way! What are these leaves doing? The film is sped up, so it shows the leaves following the sun. That's what Dawn said. The leaves make food from the sun. Caterpillars, help! Annie! Don't worry, no caterpillar's going to eat you. Your roots and leaves and stem are very healthy, plant. And some plants can cope even if they're not. Show us, Pod. Here's Jim. He's a tree surgeon. He looks after 30,000 trees in London. He has to check if they've got healthy leaves, branches, trunks and roots. Hey, Jim, is this tree doing OK? No, this tree's not very healthy at all. We can see here, we can see some live leaves here which are very healthy, they're still green, whereas on this twig here, these leaves have all died, they've browned off. Um, if the leaves die, it means the tree can't get any food. What caused that? This tree has got a disease called fire blight. Um, it infects the leaves and can eventually kill whole branches of the tree. So healthy leaves are really important. But why don't trees die in winter when they lose all their leaves? Well, basically, the tree goes into hibernation or a long sleep over winter um, and it shuts itself right down. It stores a lot of energy in its trunk, a lot of food resources in its trunk, and it basically just shuts down and goes to sleep over the winter time. What happens if trees have a problem with their roots? If there's a problem with the roots, what we would look for is we would look for any fungus, perhaps, that might be growing on top of the surface, either at the base of the tree or anywhere within the rooting area. And the rooting area can easily be as far as this pod, but fibrous roots will often go on even further. Yeah, they need to be that long to stop the tree falling over. What's next? Ooh, that's a nasty fungus. I hope I don't catch it. This fungus that we've got going on the outside here, this is called an artist fungus. And what it tells us is that the centre of the tree is actually decaying. What this can actually mean for the tree is the tree may become unstable in a high wind. Although the tree does look healthy, we may have to consider removing it. And it does upset us because this fantastic tree could be as old as 150 years. I hope you save it. What's next, Jim? OK, Pod, here we've got an ash tree with another sort of trunk problem. On this tree, we've got a bark injury. What this means for the tree is that it won't be able to transport water as well. And the leaves and some of the branches may die back. In this tree, we've actually got some dead wood up further in the crown that I'm going to have to climb up and remove. I'm just going to remove this dead branch and then this tree should be fine. There you are, plant. Most trees survive very well. Look out below. Watch out, Pod. So, don't worry, plant. OK? OK. As long as you promise to look after me. No worry there, plant. We should both look after you. Oh, thank you. I feel unafraid once more. Good. Except... Now, now what? what? How do you know for sure I'll survive? Well, because... Um... The plant person said, um... Yes, but how does he know for sure? They've done experiments, that's why. They? 
Who's they? Pod? Who's they? Pod! Where are you? Here I am, and here I go! This is where they are. Ah, they're... Plant scientists. They've got loads of plants there. The more plants they test, the more accurate the results. They're not going to experiment on me, are they? No, plant, don't worry. In this experiment, they're taking samples of stems to test for bacteria that might make the plants die too quickly. I hope I don't end up like that. This looks like another experiment. Follow them, Pod. Okie dokie! Right, now what we're going to do is use these two rulers to stuck together. And we're going to measure the height of the plant for each of the plants. Hiya, Leighton. What's going on? We're looking at the effects of the amount of water that the plants receive on the rate of growth of the plants themselves. Uh, the way they've done it is to sow seeds like these maize seeds and then six days ago we put them into groups of ten plants and each group of ten had different amounts of water. Sarah, how much water did your plants get today? No water. Ellie, what about yours? Fifty millilitres. And James? A hundred and fifty millilitres. Leighton, why have the children got ten plants each? Wouldn't it be easier to test just the one? Well, Pod, although these maize seeds look the same, in actual fact, they're really quite different. And if we picked on just one seed, it might give a very odd result. So, in general, we use large numbers of plants from large numbers of seeds, and that will give us a clearer picture of what's going on. OK, that's all the plants measured, is it? All finished? Yes. Yeah? Right, now we what we need to do is draw up the bar chart. So follow me over to the graph. James? 63. 63. Okay, next one? 52. Oh, even smaller. Okay, next one? 24 centimetres. 24. Okay. Well, there seems to be a clear difference between these three groups of plants. The ones with no water are the smallest, and the ones with most water seem to be the highest. The reason we need so many plants in an experiment is that individual plants may show quite wide differences. But if we use large numbers, we can see a general trend like this. Well done, children. Now, come over here. Do you know what special treat is made from maize? No. Popcorn. Yummy. Time to go outside. Do I have to? Does she have to? But I thought you wanted to be with your own kind. Well, you make me feel so at home. Then stay as long as you want. Thank you. Eek! <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Something's tickling me. <laughs> it's the worms. They're a present from me. My own worms? You have everything you need now, plant. Thank you, Pod. You're welcome. <laughs> Arno, and the cheeky red robot pod. Yes, she has Arno, Arno, and the cheeky red robot pod. So here we are, and off we go. And join us again on BBC Two for another mission with Pod. Same time, eleven forty-five next Thursday.